this is a this is a 79 year old 72 year old gentleman who came in with uh, lower extremity weakness imbalance of one month okay and then that's a slide that would tell us yet again neurology neurosurgery is about lesion localization and uh, we start with the exam, sorry, history of physical exam that would lead us to the appropriate imaging and this would generate a differential diagnosis. So it comes in, gait imbalance, urinary frequency, weakness of the lower extremities of one month. Um, that's his past medical history, atrial fibrillation on Comedin, had the history of appendectomy. On exam, it had a sensory level. So when you test the sensations, they're intact until T8, the dermatome T8. Below that, uh, sensory uh, perception was less at four out of five in the lower extremities. So it has a sensory level of T8, four out of five lower left. So definitely that localizes the thoracic spine. Definitely at brisk reflexes. So that's a thoracic spine uh, level injury. These are the dermatomes. Uh, you need to uh, memorize them. Where C4 is, where C5, C6, C7 here, and then C8, T1, you need to memorize these dermatomes. Each nerve root is responsible of supplying sensation to a certain area of the skin. And that's more of the same, the importance of dermatomes. So you'd say, okay, you have this patient with a deficit, what would explain it? It can be a thoracic lesion compressing the spinal cord like a uh, epidural tumor, disc herniation. It can be an infection like an epidural abscess compress, compressing the spinal cord. Can be also inflammation, transverse myelitis, multiple sclerosis, and sometimes vitamin B12 deficiency, which would cause what we call combined system degeneration. Uh, involvement of the dorsal columns can also cause a picture of presentation like this. And so you, you, can, you, you obtain an image and would help you with the diagnosis. So you get an MR of the thoracic spine that shows big disc herniation here, compressing the spinal cord. A lot of pressure on the spinal cord and you see there's a edema or swelling within the spinal cord here. And uh, definitely this patient needs to be managed surgically. That's a disc herniation. First thing you wanna verify if it's a calcified disc, that's all technicalities you don't, you know, but you gotta, I'm showing this case to show you the thought process that goes behind each case. And, uh, uh, you know, the more you know about the patient, uh, the less the surprises. Um, so we are liberal with preoperative imaging, liberal with preoperative imaging, because, you know, surprises are unpleasant. So with this particular case, uh, you need to get a CT scan to make sure it's not a calcified disc, because if it's a calcified disc, the way you resect it is different than if it's a soft disc. Calcified disc, you need to go from the front, lateral, anterior, lateral. If it's a soft disc, you can go from the back. Put a fiducial here to help you localize. You take the patient to the OR, you find the fiducial here, would help you where, identify where the lesion is. Fiducial is a marker. You put it preoperatively to help you with the counting so that you're not operating on the wrong level. So see, a lot of things are involved with taking care of these patients. It's a, small, it's a disc herniation, you know, uh, localized to T7, T8, but uh, the fix for it and the thought process is not as simple. And then uh, for soft disc I mentioned, and these are just technical, you can go from the back. If it's a uh, calcified disc or a central disc, you get from the front through an anterior transthoracic approach. Um, so a lot of things are involved. Preoptive antibiotics, cefazolam, and vancomycin, you use an open Jackson table. This is a specific table for from positioning. You gotta get the microscope, you need to get the ultrasound because once you do the decompression, you wanna make sure that the disc in front of the spinal cord is gone. How do you do that? You get an ultrasound, otherwise you can't tell if you did the job. And then you do neural monitoring, you watch the nerves, uh, sensory and motor function, uh, just to make sure you're not hurting the patient uh, and you're continuing getting feedback. Uh, that you know the spinal cord functionality is normal uh, or at baseline while you're doing the case. Want to always keep the blood pressure on the higher side to keep can, to keep uh, uh, the spinal cord adequately perfused. And then um, you need an X-ray to kind of find the fiducial. And uh, that's what we do. You position them. 
do you remove a little bit of the um, a facet, get down to the uh, uh, to the pedicle, and then because you can't retract on the spinal cord, you find the fragment and then you push it into that trough that you create. And this is an interoperative image. That's up, down, patient is face down, head up, feet down. We did the decompression, that's your spinal cord. We removed the bone, lateral to the uh, lamina, lamina, so it's the facet, we remove the facet and remove a little bit of the ligament and you find the disc, you push it into this trough that you create and you get the ultrasound bef you know, before, that's the disc, that's your spinal cord, that's the disc pushing on the spinal cord from the front, that's your ultrasound probe. You can see that's your, that looks normal, but a lot of pressure here. These are the vertebrae T7, T8, and that's your disc. And then when you do remove the disc, you, you um, get an, another ultrasound to make sure that you got the job done because you can't tell without an ultrasound if you really remove the pressure in front of the spinal cord. You can't retract it to check. So you get an ultrasound and you got to see through it. Admit the patient to the ICU to keep his uh, pressures up, to keep the perfusion to the spinal cord. You can get him a brace, have them mobilize with a brace, control the pain, have them more, do work with physical therapy. And then um, uh, if some patients have significant deficits, then they can't go home. They need to go to rehab after ho their hospitalization, acute inpatient rehabilitation. And uh, that's what we did with this patient. He, he did uh, well and recovered. And we continue to follow these patients. Two weeks for a wound check, six weeks, you know, general checkup, get some x-rays, just make sure, because we did the laminectomy, he doesn't have kyphosis or it's not generating instability. Then we keep watching them up to a year, if not more. This patient did well. Hey everyone, Ryan Rad here from neurosurgerytraining.org. If you like that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.